International Space Station The largest modular space station in low Earth orbit at the moment is the International Space Station, ISS. Five space agencies are involved in this international project, NASA, the United States, Roscosmos, Russia, JAXA, Japan, ESA, Europe, and CSA, Canada. Intergovernmental treaties and agreements define who owns and uses the space station. 9. Astrobiology, Astronomy, Meteorology, Physics, and other disciplines all perform research on the station as a microgravity and space environment laboratory. The ISS is ideal for testing the hardware and systems needed for potential long-duration journeys to the Moon and Mars in the future. The Space Station Freedom Project, an American plan to build a permanently manned space station, and the concomitant Soviet-slash-Russian Mir-2 plan, which had identical goals in 1976, were the forerunners of the ISS program. Following the Soviet and later Russian Salyut, Almaz, and Mir stations as well as the American Skylab, the ISS is the seventh space station to have had personnel living on board. It is often visible to the unaided eye from the surface of the Earth and is the largest artificial object in space and satellite in low Earth orbit. Reboost maneuvers utilizing the engines of the Zvezda service module or incoming spacecraft are used to maintain an orbit with an average altitude of 400 kilometers, 250 miles. The ISS makes 15.5 orbits around the planet each day, taking around 93 minutes. The station is split into two parts, the Russian Orbital Segment, ROS, which is controlled by Russia, and the United States Orbital Segment, USOS, which is operated jointly by the United States and other states. There are six modules in the Russian section. Ten modules make up the U.S. section, and 76.6% of their support services are provided by NASA, 12.8% by JAXA, 8.3% by ESA, and 2.3% by CSA. Prior to now, Roscosmos had backed the continuation of ROS through 2024 and had suggested using the segment to build a new OPSEC-branded Russian space station. The 2022 Russian invasion of Ukraine and the ensuing international sanctions on Russia, who potentially might lower, redirect, or cancel financing from their side of the space station due to the sanctions put on them, have made continued collaboration unclear. The first ISS component was launched in 1998, and the first permanent occupants, who were launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome on October 31, 2000, arrived on November 2, 2000. Since then, the station has been continuously occupied for 21 years and 309 days, breaking the previous record of 9 years and 357 days held by the Mir space station and becoming the longest continuous human presence in low Earth orbit. A little more than 10 years after the installation of the previous significant expansion, Leonardo, in 2011, the most recent large pressurized module, NACA, was added. The station is still being built and put together, and in 2016 an experimental inflatable habitat was added. Starting in 2021, numerous significant new Russian components will also be launched. The station's operation permission was extended in January 2022 to 2030, and money was promised to last until then. Former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstein said, Given our current budget constraints, if we want to go to the moon and we want to go to Mars, we need to commercialize low Earth orbit and go on to the next step. There have been calls to privatize ISS operations after that in order to pursue future moon and Mars missions. Pressurized housing units, support trusses, photovoltaic solar arrays, thermal radiators, docking ports, experiment bays, and robotic arms make up the ISS. The U.S. Space Shuttle and Russian Proton rockets have both launched significant ISS modules. The Russian Soyuz and Progress, the SpaceX Dragon 2, the Northrop Grumman Space System Cygnus, and formerly the European Automated Transfer Vehicle, ATV, the Japanese H-2 Transfer Vehicle, and SpaceX Dragon 1 all provide services to the space station. Pressurized cargo can be brought back to Earth using the Dragon spacecraft for purposes such as bringing back scientific experiments for additional study. 251 astronauts, 
cosmonauts, and space tourists from 20 different countries have traveled to the space station as of April 2022. Many of them have done so more than once. Purposes The International Space Station, ISS, was designed to serve as a factory, laboratory, observatory, and transportation hub as well as a staging platform for upcoming expeditions to the Moon, Mars, and asteroids. Not all of the purposes anticipated in the original Memorandum of Understanding between NASA and Roscosmos have, however, been realized. The ISS was assigned expanded roles serving economic, diplomatic, and educational missions in the 2010 United States National Space Policy. Manufacturing The parts for in-orbit assembly were produced in numerous nations since the International Space Station is a multinational joint endeavor. The Destiny, Unity, Integrated Trust Structure, and Solar Arrays were made in the United States at the Marshall Space Flight Center and matured assembly facility starting in the mid-1990s. The Operations and Checkout Building and the Space Station Processing Facility, SSPF, received these modules for final assembly and preparation for launch. At Moscow's Khrunichev State Research and Production Space Center, the Russian modules, notably Zarya and Zvezda, were created. Zvezda was first produced in 1985 as a part for Mir-2, but it was never launched and ended up becoming the ISS service module. Along with numerous other contractors from across Europe, the European Space Agency's ESA, Columbus module was created in the EADS Astrium Space Transportation Facilities in Bremen, Germany. The Thales Alenia space plant in Turin, Italy, initially produced the other ESA-built modules, Harmony, Tranquility, the Leonardo MPLM, and the Cupola. 94. The Kennedy Space Center SSPF received the structural steel hulls of the modules for launch preparation. The Japanese experiment module KIB was created at the Institute of Space and Astronautical Science and the NASDA, now JAXA, Tsukuba Space Center, among other technology manufacturing sites in Japan. The Kibo module was shipped to the SSPF and then flown there by airplane. The Canadarm2 and the Dexter Grapple Fixture, which make up the mobile servicing system, were produced at a number of facilities in Canada, including the David Florida Laboratory and the United States under a contract with the Canadian Space Agency. Northrop Grumman developed the mobile base system, a Canadarm2 linking framework installed on rails. Assembly In November 1998, construction of the International Space Station, a significant effort in space architecture, started. Except for RASVIT, Russian modules were robotically launched and docked. The Space Shuttle provided all other modules, which needed to be installed by ISS and shuttle crew members utilizing the Canadarm2, SSRMS, and extravehicular activities, EVAs. By the 5th of June 2011, they had added 159 components over the course of more than 1,000 hours of EVA. 32 of these spacewalks were launched from the airlocks of space shuttles that were docked. 127 of these spacewalks were launched from the space station. Throughout the construction process, the station's beta angle had to be taken into account. Zarya, the ISS's initial module, was launched on a self-contained Russian Proton rocket on November 20th, 1998. It offered electrical power, propulsion, attitude control, and communications, but lacked long-term life support systems. Two weeks later, on Space Shuttle Mission STS-88, a passive NASA module called Unity was launched, and during EVAs, it was connected to Zarya by crew. Two pressurized mating adapters, PMAs, are present on the Unity module, one of which permanently attaches to Zarya and the other of which enables the Space Shuttle to dock with the space station. The ISS was unmanned for two years at the time, whereas the Russian, Soviet, Station Mir was still staffed. The Zvezda module was launched into orbit on July 12, 2000. Its solar arrays and communications antenna were erected by pre-programmed commands on board. 
The Zarya Unity vehicle then executed the rendezvous and docking via ground control and the Russian automated rendezvous and docking system, with Zvezda serving as the passive target and maintaining a station-keeping orbit. Soon after docking, Zarya's computer handed control of the station over to Zvezda's computer. In order to make the station habitable permanently, Zvezda added sleeping quarters, a bathroom, a kitchen, CO2 scrubbers, a dehumidifier, oxygen generators, and workout equipment. She also improved data, phone, and television connections with mission control. On Soyuz TM-31, the first resident crew, Expedition 1, arrived in November 2000. Astronaut Bill Shepard and cosmonaut Sergei Krikalev requested the use of the radio call sign Alpha at the conclusion of their first day on the station because they found it more convenient than the more complicated International Space Station. Early in the 1990s, the station was referred to as Alpha, and its continued usage throughout Expedition 1 was authorized. For a while, Shepard had been urging project managers to use a new moniker. In a pre-launch news conference, he had mentioned a naval custom, humans have been sailing the seas for thousands of years. These ships have been planned and constructed, and they have been launched with the hope that their names will bring luck to the crew and success to their journey. The Russian Space Corporation Energia's president at the time, Yuri Semyonov, objected to the name Alpha, believing that Mir was the first modular space station and that Beta or Mir 2 would have been more appropriate titles for the ISS. Missions STS-92 and STS-97 of the space shuttle were followed by Expedition 1's arrival. These two flights each added a section to the station's integrated truss structure, giving it more attitude support for the additional mass of the USOS, Kuban communication for US television, and sizable solar arrays to augment the station's four existing arrays. The station kept growing during the following two years. The pier's docking container was delivered by a Soyuz U rocket. The Destiny Laboratory, Quest Airlock, the station's main robot arm, the Canadarm 2, and more sections of the integrated truss structure were all delivered by the Space Shuttle's Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour. The Space Shuttle Columbia catastrophe in 2003 and the ensuing flying suspension disrupted the expansion timeline. Until STS-114, which was flown by Discovery, the Space Shuttle was stationary. With the arrival of STS-115 and Atlantis in 2006, which brought the station's second set of solar arrays, assembly once again began. On STS-116, STS-117, and STS-118, additional truss segments and a third set of arrays were delivered. The station's ability to generate power was significantly increased, allowing for the addition of the Columbus European Laboratory and Harmony node as well as more pressurized modules. The first two parts of KIB came next, not long after. The fourth and final set of solar arrays were installed as part of STS-119's completion of the integrated truss structure in March 2009. The Russian POIST module was delivered on STS-127 in July 2009 after the last KIB segment. The Space Shuttle Endeavour delivered the third node, Tranquility, together with the cupola during STS-130. The penultimate Russian module, Rasvid, was then delivered in May 2010. In compensation for the 1998 delivery of the US-funded Zarya module by the Russian Proton rocket, Rasvid was delivered by Space Shuttle Atlantis on STS-132. On the penultimate voyage of discovery, STS-133, the Leonardo pressurized module from the USOS was delivered to the station in February 2011. The following year, on STS-134, Endeavour delivered the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer. The integrated truss structure and 15 pressurized modules made up the station as of June 2011. NEM-1 and NEM-2, two power modules, have yet to be launched. In July 2021, the European robotic arm and Russia's new primary research module NACA arrived at the International Space Station. The European robotic arm has the ability to move to various locations on the Russian modules. The nodal module Prickle, the newest addition from Russia, docked in November 2021. The station's total mass fluctuates throughout time. The module's combined launch mass is approximately 417,289 kilograms as of September 3, 2011. The mass of the station's experiments, spare components, crew, personal belongings, food, clothing, propellants, 
water, gas, docked spacecraft, and other objects all contribute to its overall mass. The oxygen generators continuously discharge hydrogen gas overboard, 